All right, next up. Um, Really, really excited that Dennis is here, um, one of the co-founders of Foursquare. Obviously, Foursquare has gotten name checked like 15 or 20 times in the morning session. Um, Dennis is here to explain what it really is and how it's going to change marketing uh, in the real world. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Dennis Crowley. Hi. So hi, my name is Dennis Crowley. I am the uh, co-founder of a company called Foursquare. I'm usually on this side, so that's why the bubble's over there. Um, <clears throat> do you guys know Foursquare? Do people know Foursquare? Yes, okay, good. I just I checked in here and I saw that it was like 20 other people that were checked in. Has anyone checked in? And there's people upstairs, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for checking in. So, you know, I, I used to do this exercise just because no one in the room knew what Foursquare is, but now everyone does, so it's kind of nice. Um, but what I'll do is I'm gonna run through some of the, um, you know, just kind of an overview of what Foursquare is, and uh, hopefully it's not too redundant, but I'm assuming there's a couple people. Has anyone never heard of it? Yes, okay, that's good. So it'll be a, a little bit helpful to some folks. Anyway, we're uh, you know, a scrappy like 20 person startup downtown. This is our office. We're down in the Village Voice building. Um, you know, we've been around since last March or so, and now we're about, uh, God, we're growing very quickly. We're about a million and a half users. We broke the million and a half user mark over the weekend. Uh, so anything, we, we, we're making things for mobile phones that are supposed to make cities easier to use. And so it combines things like friend finders with social city guide elements. So you just kind of have an awareness of like where your friends are and what they're doing, the types of places that they go to. Like a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh, it's like Twitter, but it's just for location. So it's not about everything you're doing, it's just where you are. Um, so if you take a look, you know, you know, if you open up Foursquare, it tells you all the places that happen to be nearby. And one of the things that's really unique about what we're doing is like we have this layer of game mechanics that we put on top of everything that it kind of turns life into a game. And we incentivize people and really encourage people to do things that they normally wouldn't do. So every time you check into places like pizza shops or bars or restaurants, you get points and you unlock badges. We have this mechanic called the mayor, which is the person that's been there most often. And people like collect these badges and kind of trade these points back and forth and really fight over being the mayor. And it kind of turns like you know, the, the example of like going to lunch, going to the same delis over and over again into a little bit like a, a game. Um, you know, when you're at a place, we show you the people that are there, we give you the opportunity to connect with some of those folks as well. Um, and here's, the, you know, here's some of the badge screens. Like in order to, you know, do this whole life as a game thing, we, uh, you know, we have badges like crunk that you get for going out four nights in a row. Or, you know, school night for staying out late on a Tuesday night. Um, or the Brooklyn one for spending a lot of time in, like, in, in Brooklyn. And people collect these kind of like you collect merit badges, right? So if anyone was ever like this guy, then like you probably understand this. And it's almost like these pieces of digital candy that people get. But what we're finding is that like, we can do things like create, like we created this gym rat badge. And the gym rat badge is out there specifically like you have to go to the gym 10 times in a month to get it. And people will go out of their way to kind of get these things. Um, and so you can change people's behavior, you know, by putting these little pieces of candy out there and encouraging them to go hit them. Um, another one we did is like this, we have this pizza badge. And so, you know, it's like if you go to 20, if you can find 20 different pizza places and check in there, you unlock the pizza badge. And again, it's like, you know, it's challenging people to go out and try interesting things. And so we've created all these different badges for a number of things. Like a bunch of them are nightlife based, but then as we're starting to grow, we're starting to, you know, really, you know, look at, um, you know, where we can, just opportunities where we can be a little bit broader. So we have like, that's the pizza one, there's one for art galleries. Um, this one up here is like for entourage, like getting a bunch of friends together and moving around the city. We have one for playgrounds. We have one for birthday parties. Like when people check in, they shout out, oh, happy birthday, Nathan, or whatever. And so if you do that enough times, you get the birthday badge. Um, and then we have these tips here that people leave around. So they take these pieces of like, like digital content and just leave them for other people to find. And a lot of time it's like, oh, uh, oh you, while you're at this barbecue place, you have to order the ribs and get the special sauce that's not in the menu that only the locals know about. Or if you're at this bar, you should definitely you know, chat up the bartender and talk to him about this because then it'll he'll buy you some drinks. Uh, so it's like tips that users are leaving for, for folks. And as people are using it, like these tips pop up, like, oh, while you're here, this is what you should be doing. So it's often, you know, people will go to different cities or, or travel around in interesting neighborhoods, and they'll get little information about like what they should be doing. And it actually it works really, really well. Um, and this is the type of feedback we get from users. Like they feel, um, I guess, more excited and more compelled to go out and kind of explore because Foursquare gives them some like reward mechanism for that. Um, I don't know if anyone's like a real old school like nerd role playing game person, but this is like your classic role playing game metaphor where you get experience points for doing stuff. And you know, this is the way that we think of the world a little bit, like in terms of like Zelda and Super Mario, and I think it's like a Final Fantasy screenshot. But we're trying to turn into this, like, oh, you're an expert at pizza, or you're an expert at karaoke, or you're an expert at sushi. And like you're collecting data about the little things that people are doing in an effort to you know, recycle that data, give it back to users, and um, you know, really help people make smart recommendations about what's going on. Right? So here's kind of the second part of this presentation, which has more text than photos. Um, 
But like, you know, we've, we're doing this whole thing where we've got, you know, kind of the social graph on top of location-based services with some game mechanics. And, you know, we're reaching out to local merchants and, and a lot of brand, uh, like big brands and businesses and trying to figure out, like, how can they use Foursquare to do interesting things? So we break this down into really like four groups, like mom and pop stores and retail chains and media companies and, and consumer packaged goods. You guys are all media folks. Like most people, agency and media folks here, is that right? No one? People hate this game? Um, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, so let me just blow through some of the, like, the mom and pop stuff. So this is like something interesting that we started seeing this summer. You know, people would hang up signs and, and put like little blackboards outside of their, their businesses like, oh, if you're the mayor, you get a free cup of coffee. If you check in, you get $2 off. This is something like we didn't anticipate, but people just started doing it. So we built it into the app. We built this, all this infrastructure that allows local venues to go in there and be like, oh, I own this place. I want to give a special to someone that, bring, you know, that checks in and then brings three of their friends here. And because we can do some of the math on our end, we know like, oh, is this a loyal customer or not? Like, are they deserving of this special or not? Um, and we're seeing, you know, we've gotten a lot of press for this stuff. And we're finding that there's, there's venues that when they do this stuff and they really encourage people to check in and they, they have nice enticing offers, like they actually end up selling more stuff. It's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we're only about a year old, so we're just starting to you know, explore this. And now we printed up you know, 10,000 of these things and we're mailing them out all over the place. And so like, it's just starting to happen a little bit. Um, and you know, the question's always like, why does the business care? Like, why would they want to do this? Why do they encourage people to check in? Um, we, you know, part of the reason is we give them stats on it. So if, you, if you're offering something to our users, like a free hot dog or free, you know, um, you know, free hot chocolate if you've been here X amount of times, whatever, like, we'll trade you, you know, the freebies for the users for uh, insight into the stats. So we can tell you who's coming and when they've been going and who the best customers are and who they're not. Um, and you know, just kind of to walk you through the experience, like when people check in, like you, you know, you get pinged on your phone. So this is me checking in at the coffee shop that's, uh, you know, that's around the corner from our office. Uh, and a lot of people send these check-in messages out to Twitter and out to Facebook. Like, you know, if I was that coffee shop owner and I searched for, you know, Think Coffee, there's a whole bunch of people that are like checking in and almost having like a discussion about their their experiences there. So it's a way to kind of tease some of that stuff out. And it also shows up in in Facebook, right? So people are pushing a lot of this content out to Twitter and Facebook. And so every time I check in. You know, it's almost like a, you know, if I'm at a coffee shop or if I'm at a Starbucks or if I go out to dinner or whatever, it's like a mini ad, you know, on behalf of me, it goes out to all of, you know, all of my friends. And if you're, you know, if, if you want to rack those numbers up, if you've got like 10,000 Twitter followers and like, uh, you know, a thousand friends on Facebook, even if you're just dealing with a couple hundred people here, every time you check in, if that stuff's going out, like those are, those are impressions about your local business. And that's something that businesses haven't been able to do. And that's, I think, was part of why they're really excited about some of this stuff. Um, does anyone know what this is? Any Foursquare users? Yeah, awesome. So this is the swarm badge that you get if you get 50 people together in one spot, which we're like, oh, that will never happen. But now it happens like at every baseball game in the country. Um, to change the rules. But anyway, so local merchants started figuring out like, hey, we can have swarm parties. And we'll encourage all of the users that want the swarm badge that can't get it in Minneapolis, like to come to our bar at a certain time. And you know, there, you know, people go there just to unlock the special. So they throw these like swarm parties. They take pictures around it. Like they've get hundreds of people to show up. If I was, uh, let me see how far I can go back. But um, yeah, so this I, I can't remember what venue this is, but this is one that threw a swarm party. And right in the middle is like that big jump up, and they're like, okay, this is great. You know, we'll continue to do this stuff and encourage people to come back. Sorry to go all the way back like that. Hope no one's flipping out. Um, and so, you know, we're starting to see, you know, those, like I showed you the slide with the blackboard on it before, like kind of the grassroots stuff. And now things are getting a little bit bigger. So this is like you walk into a casino and it's, hey, check in on Foursquare and you can get rewards, uh, you know, tied to the places that you're staying in. This is an, another billboard out in Las Vegas. Like a huge billboard outside of this, I don't know, it's a mall or a casino or something, where it's like, here is the mayor of the casino, here are the people that are checking in. And we're starting to see venues put this like up at their cash register on the little iPads that they have. Or they're starting to put it like in the LCD screens that they usually show sports on. You know, so it's information about what's going on in the venue in real time. Um, so let me skip ahead. So number two here is retail chains and some of the stuff we've been doing. Like, you know, as we're doing with mom and pop shops, like the venues, like big retail chains are getting really excited. Um, and so, I don't know if anyone heard, we did, some, you know, we did something with Starbucks. We've been doing this for like eight months with them, trying to you know, warm them up into the space a little bit, and they're, they're really super proactive and, and awesome about it. But now, every, not every Starbucks, I think there's like 5,000 Starbucks in the country, we, including the one in my like crappy cow-tipping hometown, where I can be like, I'm the mayor, and you know, I get a dollar off a Frappuccino, right? And so this is like, it's kind of baby steps into this world of like digital couponing, but it's not just digital couponing. It's like smarter, more social digital coupons that are tied to like the experiences that I have, like the people that I know, like the current contextual awareness of things. So it's, uh, like, it's getting kind of interesting, right? Um, and so what is this? Oh, this is you know, Starbucks tweeting about, about things. And then you know, Safeway kind of jumping on, being like, oh, we have Starbucks in our place, uh, or in our, in our businesses. And then them also you know, kind of encouraging the usage through, uh, you know, through Twitter and through Facebook. Um, 
when, when brands approach us, mostly what they want to talk about are uh, badges. Like, they all want their own badges. And it's tough because we don't really want to dilute the badges. Like, has anyone here ever contacted us about getting a badge? Trying to? Yeah. And you guys all talked to uh, Tristan, who's our, our director of business development that graduates from Stanford next week. Uh, so he's like, <laughs> so he ha if he hasn't gotten back for you yet, it's because he's like working on graduating. So he, he will be back anyway. But anyway, so like Starbucks, you know, in exchange for like pushing us out all over the place, like, yeah, we'll do a barista badge for you. And so this is the badge that you get if you've been to, you know, if you go to 10 different Starbucks. Um, and then, of course, you know, you get people that are tweeting all about this and really excited, like, oh my gosh, I got my dollar off. Or, you know, now I, I don't know what they instructed the baristas at the store, but we see a lot of these. Like, I was also addressed as Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, it's kind of like the, the employees are having fun with it. And it's not just on like a, you know, on a, on a local level of like, you know, some guy selling coffee out of a truck or like a, a one-person shop. This is like, you know, big national chain that's getting into it. Um, you know, we've done some other stuff with like Tasty Delight too. Uh, this is like, you know, like the frozen yogurt place. Um, and so these guys have actually tied their loyalty card into Foursquare. So whenever you swipe your card through, like it not only registers that you're there, but it tracks how many points you're getting to. And so this is like another way that they're able to spread the word on it. Um, Jimmy Choo, this is, you know, we, we've dealt with a lot of these folks like personally, just kind of like lining up these deals. And then Tristan, their biz dev guy, was telling me, he's like, I just woke up one morning and I guess we did a deal with Jimmy Choo that we didn't really know about because they didn't have to come through us. Like they just set up a Foursquare account and they're like, okay, well, what we're going to do is check in at different places around, I think it was in, in London. And, um, you know, wherever we check in, if you can show up in the next 20 minutes, you get a free pair of shoes. So you better get there immediately. And so people would follow the brand on Foursquare the same way they'd follow it on Twitter and, you know, race around trying to find this. And it took, you know, it took them like a month. Uh, someone like a, uh, a couple weeks in order to catch up to them, but you know it was kind of happening, and it's like happening without us actually being involved. Um, what was this? Oh, just <laughs> this is kind of an awkward, weird story. But someone just like I guess was looking for a person with a Jimmy Choo bag and just ran into them. Anyway, so media companies, right? So we were talking about this, and John, I'm going to run a couple minutes over too, so sorry about that. Um, but uh, so here's like the, the average tip that pops up, like, oh, this is a whiskey bar that's down in the East Village. If you guys are from out of town, you should go here because it's kind of awesome. Um, but you know, if you check in there, if you check around the corner, it tells you what you know what, what should pop up. Um, now we're starting to deals with like with media companies. Like the History Channel was one where you know they've gone through and left their own tips, and they're not tips about where to eat in, in bars and restaurants necessarily, but it's about this is what happened in New York, this is what happened in Chicago. Um, you know, we had the city of Chicago put together like a Ferris Bueller tour that you get little pips, uh, tips that would pop up about the movie. And so what's this? It's like this this is the, uh, you know, if you're at the High Line, uh, it tells you a little bit of history about it. Like, I got one near the office, our office, that told us that, you know, the first elevator ever in New York was from right around the corner. And I'm like, that's pretty awesome. And of course, these guys get a badge too, so if you go and accomplish enough of the things that they set out to prescribe, you can unlock that. Um, we did some stuff with Bravo TV. Like, Bravo TV has all this reality TV program programming that overlaps with, you know, it's with real life. Like, you know, if you're, um, if you're, you know, you're, if you're the real housewives, like they're actually going out to these real places. So Bravo comes up with this program and encourages people to actually go to these places that are featured on the show and they leave four square tips behind. And if you go to enough of the places, you unlock a badge. And you know, what we're working with them now on is like, oh, the badge that you unlock should be redeemable. Like you should click on it, it should give you a coupon code and you should get like a gift bag from them. Or you should be invited to some, you know, VIP dinner that gets all the fans of the shows together. So now that like we give out all these pieces of digital candy, it's all about like, what are the, you know, what does the candy transform into and what do people actually get out of it? And so that's kind of the next challenge for us. Um, Bravo was awesome enough that they made us a TV commercial and I was going to show up and I'm running out of time. So maybe I'll just send it to you guys. But it's like a TV show, a TV commercial that's advertising what we're doing on behalf of Bravo and how it fits into the context of Bravo shows. Um, VH1 is playing the stuff over some of their programming too. Like, oh, this, you know, the star of this particular show, Chili, is, uh, you know, she recommends that, oh, you should check in here on Foursquare and she'll leave tips behind for you to uncover. Um, the Wall Street Journal got into it, and they started leaving tips behind about like the best things to do, like in the financial areas behind some of the bigger cities. Which is, you know, this is interesting, and like, and you know, it follows the model that we've been doing. But if you remember, like when New York, on, um, when Times Square was evacuated a couple weeks ago, you know, the first thing that they did is their, their user checked into, you know, checked into Times Square and broke this news, like, oh, portion of the Times Square have been evacuated because of a suspicious package. And a lot of people that I know, like, they found out about that because of because of this, and that's. That's new. Like we looked at the service, and be like, man, it's not just about like playground badges and bars and restaurants. It's about actually going out. Like it can be about all these other things. And we're having that same kind of epiphany that I think you know Twitter did in the sense where, okay, it's not just people talking about going to the movies, and it's not just people talking about like what they had for lunch. But there's actual stuff. There's actually real content, like meaningful behavior behind some of this. Um, so these are some of the brands that we've worked with. Um, 
if you look at it, there's, you know, there's TVs, magazines, a lot of media, like NBA stuff makes a lot of sense. What you don't see is a lot of like consumer packaged good brands. And you know, this is the stuff that most people reach out to us about. Um, and you know, it's like everyone's selling things from like, you know, batteries to home goods. And like we're really, you know, sometimes we struggle to find a way that we can take some of these things and, and overlap them with what we're doing with Foursquare. Like, do you really want a badge for batteries? Like, we gotta, I don't know, we gotta figure that out. Um, you know, we're lucky enough to be working with Pepsi, and I like my Pepsi slide. Uh, and you know, these guys are they have a lot of events that are going on. Like, they're doing some stuff with retail. There's an opportunity for them to give away soda, and maybe you know, interact with users in interesting ways. So this makes, you know, this makes a lot of sense. And of course, once we get the call, we're like, oh, I don't know. Then we have some conversations, and it starts to make a little bit more sense. Um, and now, like, you know, we're doing a lot of like, interesting trials with them. So you should see some interesting stuff this summer. Stuff like this is harder, you know. And the, like, what should we do? Like, does, is there room in Foursquare for a diaper brand? And for you know a long time we've had been like uh, no I don't think so but then it's like well why not they just sponsor the parenting version of Foursquare and then we can uh, you know build badges around that around those experiences so it's not necessarily about the brand all the time but what the brand represents and how we can actually you know start um, you know pushing content out that's related to that uh, and then I get two more slides the wild card is we see things like this we have like celebrities on Foursquare you know pushing you know pushing in pushing information out from Starbucks or from all over the place and you know we've got uh, we've got you know actors and actresses and you know personalities and you know it's, we've got a little bit of everything and so we're trying to make sense of a lot of this stuff. Um, so anyway, that's that's really that's about it. That's the Foursquare story. Thank you guys for listening. I'm like two minutes over, um, but I'll be around if you have any questions. So thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you on here for one question. Yeah, um, please. Uh, like about a month and a half ago, uh, Twitter finally, after two years of badgering. Uh, roll out a, an ad model that scales, that marketers can touch, uh -huh. uh, you know, promoted tweets. Are you thinking about that, about a business model that has that kind of scale? I mean, the, 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 that kind of stuff, you know, requires a certain amount of, you know, the guy who's graduating from Harvard to... Stanford. Stanford, sorry, the Harvard of the West, except for Berkeley, of course. <laughs> um, uh, you know, he's got to kind of manage, and you've got to manage those programs yeah, one yeah. by one by one. But when are we going to see sort of a platform level... Yeah. You know, approach that, that, that. Yeah, I think for everyone that's ever tried to get, I'm going to come up from under this. For everyone that's ever tried to get in touch with Tristan, you know, like what a big bottleneck it is. It's not that we don't think your ideas are good; it's that we just don't have time to answer all of them. And so we need to build this kind of scalable solution. And we're getting kind of crushed on all sides. Like we have, you know, from the the local businesses that are trying to claim their businesses. Like that's a, it would be a huge cue there. You'll see that stuff coming from us soon. Like um, I was hoping to have like a. Uh, we have this like Foursquare for Brands page that really d explains what everyone in this room can be doing with Foursquare. I wanted to have it live today. It'll probably be live in like a week or so. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're getting a little bit better about making that more of a self-service channel. Great. Let us know when that's available yeah, and I'll great. shoot it out to everybody. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Good. Thanks for having me.